Welcome back to another episode of Sound and Powers Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hi, guys. And today we're going to be reviewing Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. During World War II, a British colonel tries to bridge the culture between a British POW and a Japanese camp commander in order to avoid bloodshed. My first pro is the caliber of the actors in the movie. Just an example, we have David Bowie playing Jack Sellis alongside of Ryuichi Sakamoto playing Yonoi, both famous musicians in their own countries. We also have Tom. Kari playing Lawrence and Takeshi Kitano playing Hara. So my next point is how the movie feels like it's a film of East and West coming together without one side taking over the movie. Even if the director is Nagisa Oshima but the story is from a novel. So just the idea that Oshima wanted to make a film about World War II POWs showing culture clash between the British and Japanese. That really speaks a lot about this film. The idea also that this movie does not just focus on one like the title says, Lawrence. Yes, Lawrence is the main protagonist that we see, but we also get the story behind Hara, Yanoi, Jack, and other characters in the movie. We only see that Lawrence is the one who is basically retelling the story to us through his eyes. Next point is the music. The music was created by Yuichi Sakamoto, who played Yanoi in the movie. I really want to bring a spotlight into the song Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence that you heard in the movie. It feels both familiar and yet different, but at the same time, it also sounds happy and sad. This song is perfect for the movie and it felt like it embodied the whole movie from points of view of all characters. If you ever watched anime, you might have heard this song played in an AMV anime music video before, or maybe you heard the song from Utara Hikaru from the same title, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, AKA FYI. This song makes the ending of the movie stand out even more because we see that Hara has accepted his death, but Lawrence wants to save him. And the song basically captivates both person's feelings. Hara about to die and with Lawrence who wants to save him and stay alive. Next point is when they show the culture clashes like for example Hara at the beginning allowing the Korean soldier to take his own life because he was found raping the Dutch prisoner. Hara was going to allow him to die with the honor based on the Bushido code of the samurai. But Lawrence said it was wrong and inhuman. Later Hickley also says that they were called there to witness this but they were not going to watch and Yanoi got really mad saying that they were not showing respect to the soldier by watching. And this also plays to the idea why Yanoi has Lawrence alive and by his side to try to see if they can understand the Bushido code as Yanoi has followed. But Lawrence tells him that it's not right and that in war, no one has the right to kill people, but they want to think that each side is righteous and in their mind tries to justify the killing of other humans. So right there is basically the whole movie that who is right, who is wrong and at the end we see that Hara even states that he has accepted his death but at the same time he doesn't understand what crimes he committed that other soldiers also followed. So what he meant was I was just doing my job by following orders. This comes to play in any war in any side. Soldiers just follow orders even if the orders are wrong. So on to my cons. If anything I would say some of the acting on behalf of the English speaking actors was lacking. Maybe it was due to again the culture and not having an English director to help guide them along. But some of the acting on behalf of the English cast was below par. Mostly it was some of the extras and such. Next, if I had to nitpick, it would be the length of the movie and how some key issues were not really shown. For example, Yanoi's death that Hada commented on at the end. Also the statue of Jack raised in Yanoi's behalf in his hometown that Lawrence basically told Hara about. So things like that, I would have really wanted to see a little hint at the end but overall I really enjoyed this movie so with that I'm going to pass it on to my friend Tuli and see how he saw this movie and what grade he gave the movie so in relationship to what Sal said about the iconic tune to this film, which was played at the beginning of this movie, I did feel the same way in that I already heard the song before and was 
not aware where it originally came from at the time. And then when I finally saw this movie, it was one of those enlightenment moments where where I was able to draw the relationship to. Sort of like, in a way, because this film does revolve around a POW camp, it sort of reminded me, just from that retrospect, of The Great Escape, which was a movie that Sal and I reviewed a while back as well, where at the beginning of that film, there was that very iconic tune that is often used in parodies of The Great Escape. So I just wanted to point that out. That's kind of like how I felt when I heard that music at the beginning of this film. Aside from that, the characters of this film, for me, definitely, you know, Mr. Lawrence being one of the characters who really stood out alongside Captain Yanoi. And of course, the character that David Bowie played and the individual that Mr. Lawrence sort of befriended, aka Hada. There were like interesting dynamics between these characters in that these characters had not necessarily friendly relationship but this sort of relationship where they could talk amongst each other but at the same time because some of these characters were prisoners that they were being treated still as such at times i found that sort of dynamic interesting but conflicting at the same time for example how captain yanui viewed david bowie's character the struggle that i had with that relationship is i couldn't find that relationship to be what it was just based off of captain yanui's fascination with david bowie's character maybe it was like the spiritual thing that he just felt towards jack sellers i couldn't put like a grasp around that to make me feel why Captain Yanoi felt so strong towards that character and wouldn't go to an extreme length towards punishing him if Jack went out of line. And of course, he did throw him into the cell and whatnot. But I imagine, you know, if this was like any other prisoner at the POW, I'm sure Captain Yanoi would have gone to like more extreme measures if said prisoner defied him. I found that dynamic again interesting, but I think the movie was trying to draw this comparison between the two characters in relationship to their background. I think it was mentioned that Captain Yanoi wasn't there with his comrades during this like incident that happened in the past and that this was sort of compared to Jack Sellers' past and how he wasn't there for his brother when his brother needed him, especially given given what happened to the younger brother at school. So I think maybe the film was trying to draw that comparison that because they sort of had this similar sort of experience, maybe that was something that Captain Yanoi saw in Jack Sellers. But the thing is that revelation between the two characters weren't actually revealed to one another. They were revealed to Mr. Lawrence. I found that Mr. Lawrence was the character who would sort of get the relationship, if anybody, as far as, you know, from the perspective of Captain Yanoi and from Jack Jack Sellers, I can't imagine them seeing a part of themselves in one another because they, they never talk that deeply to each other about their past. So that's why I say I found the relationships between some of these characters interesting, but at the same time, kind of weird and conflicting because I struggled to sort of believe, again, a character like Captain Yanui would react the way he did towards Jack Sellers, despite some of the actions that Jack Sellers did, such as bringing flowers back to that hospital area and decorating the bed of a fallen individual to bringing food for them when they have been instructed by Captain Yanoi to undergo Gyu to standing up to Captain Yanoi before Captain Hicksley was going to get executed with Jack just walking up to where Captain Yanoi was standing and kissing him which caused such a shock to Captain Yanoi that he couldn't perform his duties anymore after the fact and had to be replaced by another individual who had a more stern view of being the commander of said POW in which then David Bowie's character got buried up to his head in the ground. Again, like I can appreciate the dynamic that these characters had towards one another, but I found some of the more deeper sort of like connections between these characters to be not believable just given how they were structured. But I would say going back to what Sal mentioned about the relationship between Hara and Mr. Lawrence though, especially with that ending scene. That I can appreciate just from the perspective of a war that these individuals were kind of involved in and how Hara couldn't understand why he was being punished the way he did given the things that he did during the war that they just aligned with what a typical soldier would do. Again, it just brings up the whole notion of what Mr. Lawrence said a couple of times in the film where, you know what, nobody's right in all of this. So I, I thought that was like a pretty huge message that 
that the film really tried to iterate and I thought it was done well given that a lot of the experience that we saw throughout the film happened around Mr. Lawrence which of course unsurprisingly has the name of his character in the title of the movie and also with what Sal said about the length of the movie I thought it was a tad long and I think a part of it is attributed to Jack Sailor's flashback where again he told what happened between him and his younger brother and although I do appreciate the backstory here I thought it was too long of a flashback it could have been reduced significantly or they could have just done without the flashback as well and just had this like heart to heart talk as it was already transpiring between Mr. Lawrence and himself not have to go into like a visual flashback just sort of confide why he as Jack Sellers the length that he would go for them because of his inability to be there for his younger brother I think that really contributed to the length of the film it's not the only thing of course but it is one scene that I thought really contributed to the length of the film that could have been reduced and then also if you're not familiar with like Japanese culture then this film does bring out some of the aspects to their culture given the time period that this film revolved around for example the hit kitty the concept of dying with honor because you performed something that was just so out of line that it was better to just preserve that honor by performing such an act to the way they uphold their lifestyle based on how they they see one another in terms of their ranks and sort of matters that comes with that two things that you would think would be simple such as bowing and not defying upper leadership so if you're not familiar with Japanese culture or even if you are then you get to notice these things throughout the film and again it does bleed into like the struggle that a character like Mr. Lawrence experienced because he's trying to be logical about the way he reacts to these sort of things where I think he even said he doesn't want to hate a Japanese person because he's trying to be compassionate and understanding from their point of view because this is their way of living but at the same time as he said nobody is right given the sort of situations that they're put under especially against one another in this instance it always just circles back to that theme and again I thought they at least did a good job to bring that concept about overall I did enjoy the film the film was just probably a tad long for my taste and some of these character dynamics although interesting I found them to be kind of weird at times just given how they reacted towards one another but I'm glad that Mr. Lawrence was able to escape or should I say get set free but ironically having to meet a friend go down in the very end it's one of those bittersweet things but it does again circle back to the whole idea that nobody wins in war so my score is going to be a 7 out of 10 I agree with how Tuli saw the movie. Also, I want to point out that the event that Yanoi was referring to was the February 26th incident where they tried to do a coup d'etat in Japan, basically an attack on the state. And Yanoi was part of the young officers, but at the time he was away from Tokyo. During that, he feels regret that he was not there, like Tuli said, with his comrades when they lost. So he feels dishonor not being there. And he feels this feeling inside of him that he needs to restore his honor but at the same time he doesn't know how to do that that's why he has Lawrence close to him to see if Lawrence kind of understands his struggle that's why he's always saying Lawrence you understand for Yanoi he gives his life to the emperor and at that time that was everybody in Japan doesn't matter if you were not in the army you were born to follow the emperor's rule whatever the emperor said was right according to them the emperor was never wrong and that's kind of the idea here like Tuli says Hara always says hey I just did what I was supposed to do why is that a crime the idea that they don't understand that comes from that social idea that everything the emperor says to them is right and by default they're never wrong so that's where you know stood and I really wanted them to show that when they were talking instead of just Lawrence saying ah yeah you were one of the shining young officers I wanted to see even if it was a flashback he's somewhere and he regrets being away from his group or platoon or whatever just show us you know that he regrets and yeah like Tuli said I think the movie was a bit too long they could have shortened even the flashback even though I love the idea of seeing the younger brother with Jack you know so we can actually visualize it versus just them telling us but like Tuli says sometimes it's it's better to show us than to tell us in this case it was a little too long my final grade for the movie is going to be a seven and a half out of ten this movie I can rewatch it and see a lot of things in Jack and Janoi who even though they're from opposite sides they kind of have this link together somehow they understand each other so i guess that does it for this review of merry christmas mr lawrence please join us next time where we're going to review tokyo godfathers Kyoko <laughs>
キヨコなんでキヨコだよ命名したのキヨシこの夜のキヨコ Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.